Okay, thank you very much, Lutin. So um, uh, let's let's move on. And in, indeed, uh, I want to do just um, um, some minutes uh, recap of what uh, what we have learned yesterday. And and for that, I have uh, just um, um, I have my my slides here. Um, so. Um, uh, so we, you are used to work in the momentum basis, then you have uh, plane waves uh, to scatter and then you set up your Feynman rules, but now we, we go in a conformal basis where we have conformal primary wave functions, uh, which are essentially Mellin transform of this, uh, of this uh, plane waves. And we have um, on the celestial sphere, I mean, the, the momentum is a function of, of omega, which, which is related to, uh, which is the energy and, and, and the, um, and the, the vec a vector Q, which depends on, on C. And then uh, you can construct a, a full set of, of um, conformal primary wave functions on, on the celestial sphere, which essentially follows from a four dimensional, uh, solving four dimensional uh, Klein Gordon or Maxwell equa um, equations. And you get a complete set uh, um, of um, wave functions, which now in this table looks as follows. I, I did it here for the vector field, which is a, I mean, for, to scatter gluons. So we have plane waves, and then um, on the on the right hand side on the celestial sphere we have conformal primary wave function, which look as follows. So they just follow, come from the plane waves by uh, a Mellin transform, and. Um, so actually, I didn't show you this epsilon, i epsilon yesterday. This is a little regularization you, you can introduce. Uh, and we didn't talk yet about this uh, polarization vectors, which of course you need for vector for um, for um, bosons. Um, and but this polarization vector um, on the celestial sphere, it it has a very nice um, form. It actually um, is just a derivative holomorphic or anti-holomorphic uh, with respect to the Celestial coordinate C, um, and then you can actually show that uh, these two vectors um, do the job for for a polarization vectors, so they fulfill the um, epsilon epsilon squared is, is one, and 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 then the neutral um, scalar part is minus one. So that you precisely this job. So this is a nice polarization vector, which are just um, multiplying this conformal wave, uh, primary wave function here. And then from this uh, complete complete set, completeness condition, we, we have um, this conformal dimensions delta, and they are constrained to be one i plus i lambda. And then the four-dimensional four helicity becomes um, a spin on the celestial sphere. And so here's again what we do, are doing. So we start with a conformal uh, with a plane wave, we do a Mellin transform with respect to the energy, and we get this uh, we get this uh, vector. Is a conformal primary wave function here. Now we also have then uh, seen or uh, set up the amplitudes, which are then so we start with a, with a, um, as, as you are known from, from last week's uh, lectures. Uh, we have this is a canonical way of writing the the uh, for example a gluon amplitude. So you have um, n external you scatter n gluons, you have n external momenta and polarization vectors entering the amplitude, and then you have a uh, you have a delta function. This is again the two 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 n minus two scattering. That's why you have a minus sign here. And this is uh, my refer to a particular um, color ordering. So we haven't um, talked about um, color order. I mean that doesn't. I mean that is uh, straightforward to implement. And then the celestial amplitudes, uh, they um, are then um, obtained from, um, from this uh, momentum space amplitudes by, by a Mellin transformer. And, and that is what, uh, how it looks like. I mean, so we get from, from the first right, right this, um, this um, amplitude in terms of um, our celestial coordinates. Uh, and then we do this Mellin transform and then we we have seen that we, we need to do some mass of this data functions in order to straightforwardly uh, compute this integrals. And, and then, of course, we get um, the celestial amplitude, which is a function of all these positions or, or Cs, which denotes uh, um, the momentum of the, of the particles and this dimensions delta. I mean, of course, there's no omega anymore because we have integrated out. 
And then we have um, already uh, computed some amplitudes, uh, namely this is of course the simplest amplitude that I can do. I mean, this is the three um, clone three mostly uh, plus uh, three clone amplitude and in celestial uh, basis it looks um, as in, it's here uh, in, in the box. Uh, and uh, uh, we can, from the conformal proper transformation property, um, we can uh, read off um, the conformal weights. Uh, I mean, and verifying that we indeed um, have scattered um, objects from the, from the principal series. And of course, you see that uh, it doesn't look like a like a straightforward conformal field theory as you are used to. It, so because we have this this delta functions, so the uh, the holomorphic piece is is um, looks like very familiar uh, CFP, but there's this under holomorphic um, dependence, which is um, kind of um, um, quite different. And and then we also um, the, the most most plus is the um, graviton amplitude. Um, though I told you already that uh, the essential, the crucial difference is, is uh, let me make it a different color, is this delta function. So here we have, um, we have the delta function constrained to be, um, with the sum of delta functions constrained to be um, uh, plus two, while here we have uh, for the clones minus three. And then actually you can just compare the other. This is completely the same factor as, as here. And, uh, and so we only have here um, this additional C2, so you might uh, somehow think, but ap apart from that, um, they have exactly the same objects, all of this delta functions. So um, you might say that I mean, when you talk about KLT or double copies, that uh, this, um, this C21 should certainly be something like uh, the panel of relating um, graviton and uh, um, and clone amplitudes. And then uh, I, I briefly sketched um, the, 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 non, um, the only or one of the only non vanishing um, Einstein Jan Mills amplitudes, scattering one um, graviton and um, two clones. And uh, we, find, we find this form here. So that's, um, and now, uh, let me, uh, of course, you may say, okay, this is, uh, can we only do uh, three point amplitudes? That looks, that's maybe a completely trivial. But uh, of course, um, we can also do a higher point amplitude. Let me just sketch because then it looks, um, then it also looks more non trivial um, how, um, how the four clone amplitude um, is computed, four clone celestial. Amplitude. And again, um, so and now we do what, what was also has been um, discussed in the question session. So we, we actually um, have now, so we yesterday we learned that the um, moment, moment of all uh, particles, so we, we scatter uh, four particles now, I mean four clones, um, they have this form, but we can might also introduce an epsilon. Uh, with epsilon is, is just plus minus one, and then we can by uh, this epsilon, this is epsilon, we can decide which clone is in and out going. And, and then uh, we have, so recall yesterday we had uh, a particular choice that we, we had uh, two, two and minus two scattering, so we have a, a, we have a fixed um, choice of epsilon. Um, and then, um, we have um, to, so as, as for the three point amplitude, we first do some um, little massage on, on this, on, on this delta functions. Um, again, so we could now again uh, read out what this delta function constraint means. So these are four delta function involved. And then we can read off some constraints and, but uh, we can actually just, uh, uh, by um, again, this is con this is conformal invariance is del delta function. So again, uh, by um, imposing um, conformal invariance, we can rewrite this delta function in a very easy way, in a way we which is uh, most useful to us. Uh, and I, I, I just write down what uh, what what will turn out to be useful for us, uh, and we can check that this is indeed um, an equality here. 
so um, and you can already see from the form of these delta functions, of course, there will be a product of, of four delta functions. Um, you can already see that um, they have exactly the, that, that transformation behavior that, that it's canceled, it cancels the transformation behavior of the, of the omega three here. I mean, we have uh, learned yesterday what, what is uh, transformation behaviors. Um, how the epsilons and these um, how the epsilons are transformed under transformation of the C's. So four and then um, another one. Of course, this is, this is now in the form that we want, we want to integrate uh, the, out the omega one and the omega two and the omega four integral, they all become then uh, trivial uh, because they're all um, constrained on these delta functions uh, by bias these delta functions. And then uh, we are left over with the omega three integral. And uh, as I said again, I mean, and you can check with the homework that this is indeed in the right case. And then we are missing still a, 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 a force delta function. Which of course also really generates some um, covariant transformation behavior, which such that the whole thing is invariant. And now uh, let's start with, so we, uh, at four point level, we again um, have only um, MHV configuration. So we can um, uh, take this uh, choice of the four, um, of the um, helicity, um, which is uh, only um, one of the only vanishing amplitudes. And then I write down already, in some, I mean, you have probably seen last week uh, several times in spinner brackets, what how this amplitude looks like and now I, immediately write, write it down in terms of um, celestial coordinates and then there's this omegas. And now, um, now we compute the celestial amplitude. Uh, which is uh, according to what I have shown you before. Um, uh, of, of fourfold um, uh, Mellin integral. And then, of course, with, with the stuff um, from here. And then uh, times um, this um, product of four delta function we have just uh, written down. Uh, um, and then, okay, then we now we work out what this integral is. So of course, I mean, according to the omega one, omega two and omega four integrals are, are trivial. And uh, uh, so we can just insert omega one, two and four in this and we get, um, Okay, the one over four is so the delta function. So we have, um, it starts with one over four. Uh, then we have epsilon three, epsilon uh, one. So this is, this is the, um, this is the uh, location on which omega one is, um, is constrained, uh, delta one. And then we have epsilon three, epsilon two. C1, 2, C4, 2, delta 2 times, and then uh, the omega 4.
and we simply have to collect everything. And then uh, there's, of course, we are still left over with this is delta function. And the last one that way will actually play an um, important role, or that actually um, and can be written, and we will see it in a moment, is um, with some gross ratios. And then, um, yeah, and this is. And now actually, um, uh, so in, in the three-dimensional case, uh, we, we had to constrain the amplitude uh, from the beginning to get, get something non-vanishing. Um, so we had, to, had some constraints on the CI and the anti-holomorphic CI. But uh, now, um, so uh, now the omega is, is of, the omega is of course a real, uh, so that means, um, uh, but the C is complex, uh, so we should make sure that, that um, these omegas are, are constrained at real positions. Um, and, and for that, uh, so in order to make sure that uh, this is, um, that we have to, uh, we really get real omegas, or in other words, that, that uh, this, um, this omegas entering here are real, uh, so that uh, the basis of this um, uh, of this um, delta um, powers um, is real. Uh, we, we can just impose it. So, so we can just impose this by by some introducing some um, for the side step functions with 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 this simply with this argument. So, From epsilon square, epsilon four. And so, epsilon square, epsilon four. So, one, so, one, so, one, so, one, so, one, so, 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 Um, and then uh, we are left over. I mean, uh, of course, um, we have not done the omega three integral, so we have now the omega three integral, which now we have to collect all power. So of course, this is the omega. Um, this is just from the Mellin transform uh, from here. So we have delta three minus one. Uh, um, then we have. A minus one, which is from the delta from the delta function, the denominator, and then we have a minus one from, uh, which is just from the amplitude. So this is this, um, that this is um, up there here, it's one over omega three, and then um, from collecting the other powers, uh, we had uh, from which come from inserting, which come from inserting all these omegas here. Uh, we get additional omega three powers, and, and if you collect them, we get this. Uh, um, and indeed, now this integral is uh, um, can be computed. It's just um, delta one plus delta two plus delta three plus delta four minus four. So since the deltas are um, one plus i lambda, so the delta the delta one is is a one plus i lambda one. Uh, um, this just means that uh, that um, it's just gives rise to a, to a um, delta function constraint on, on, on this uh, entering the, the spectrum. So, um, are there any questions to this? So this is a four-point amplitude. Now it looks a bit more, of course, more more tedious, and that, in fact, it doesn't look nice now in this form. I mean, you cannot easily see conformal invariance. So look, I mean, we have now, it starts from here, but, and then we have several factors, and then uh, this is delta functions. So it doesn't really look um, very nice. Uh, 
uh, but you can write it in a much nicer form such that uh, it looks li like um, before it looks almost like an um, I mean, like an obvious um, conformal um, field theory correlator, and that is done actually here. So uh, the the result we have computed, namely this this uh, for gluon amplitude, you can write by um, in this form, uh, namely you introduce a conformal cross ratio. That's obvious, um, you know, from conformal field theory that that when I mean for for um, for four point scattering, I mean then it's useful uh, to introduce a conformal cross ratios. But now now so we have now this position on this elastic sphere, which which are which are related to the momenta of our scattering process. So after all this cross ratio R, it must be related to some um, to some physical data. And indeed, uh, when you compute it, it's actually uh, related to the to the in um, to the um, center of mass scattering and the theta of the two to two scattering process. Um, so this is the case for uh, two go goes to two. So then you can define the scattering angle, and then you don't, of course, L all epsilons are fixed. Uh, and then um, you see that is a, a that is a, a factor you are, you are used to from um, from conform any conformal field theory textbook. Uh, and, and that is the delta function we have um, we have here. So that is um, here, and then there are some some, and that actually this uh, this long delta function here um, that can be that essentially goes into this uh, conformal um, in, into this um, constraint on the conformal Grosch ratio, and then um, all heavy side functions because we we now uh, um, go to a particular. Um, Scattering, um, I mean, namely two to two, the epsilons are fixed, and then we can work out this uh, theta function as this theta function or this um, step function, and we are left over with only one. So this is um, this is of course a very compact form, and that is um, of course um, the, the object which uh, should uh, be uh, studied further when you want to understand this conformal field theory uh, underlying um, the theory. So. And I should say that um, you can also do higher point amplitudes, and then that has been done um, in this work. And uh, that actually involves, uh, because you do all these multi multidimensional integrals, it looks like actually like, like a bit like string amplitudes, because I will um, lose in hypertrimitive functions. And, uh, and then uh, we can do also the graviton amplitudes. Uh, again, you see it looks almost like the, the, the um, flu for fluon amplitude, except we have now was well, a delta function different argument, and that I will come to this um, what this argument means or how we can uh, switch between different delta function arguments. Again, we have this um, constraint for the Grosch ratio, and then we have this factor here. So it looks um, almost like um, the function before for the gluons. And um, so this is the graviton amplitude in the conformal basis, and that will be important as we see in a moment. To study soft, soft gra graviton theorems, that the soft uh, graviton theorems we will um, learn um, in a moment that um, that uh, that are um, inferred by um, doing something on the on the deltas. And uh, yeah, should should have already seen um, in the for the gluon amplitude. There, there's no holomorphic factorization. You see that, that for example, this is delta function ties holomorphic and anti-holomorphic coordinates, and that is actually related to the particular, uh, particular form of the, um, of the um, super translation operator. We will come to this. So the super translation mixes uh, holomorphic and anti-holomorphic um, coordinates. So, and, and indeed, let me, let me um, discuss this operator now. I mean, one, one aspect um, of, of the super translation solution. So that um, then um, allows us also to see how that will give us an operator which will uh, will do this for us um, a shift on this delta. Um, um, so eventually, it will allow us to easily switch from from um, the different from switch um, shift um, the arguments in the delta functions. So. Um, now discuss. 
So we have um, discussed yesterday already um, what happens on the on the amplitude uh, after conformal transformation. We have seen that that on the celestial sphere we get some uh, some um, um, conformal um, transformation factors, which which are essentially um, nothing else than what what we expect from from um, transforming conformal primary um, operators. But now for the translation, it's a bit um, different. And that comes uh, because, I mean, of course, uh, we have somehow um, in, in the four dimensional Minkowski space, I mean, translation played an important role. We had, uh, we had plane waves, uh, so, and then momentum eigenstates, but now we are on the celestial sphere. So the momentum operator is, is kind of, um, isn't any more such a, let's say, fundamental uh, operator. It's, um, it's comprised out of an action on the celestial sphere um, coordinates and also on, 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 on as we can see, on, on, the, on the omega coordinates. So let, let us understand this. So we have, um, uh, so we, very schematically, the, the um, celestial amplitude is, um, is a um, n-fold uh, melin, in, melin um, integral. And then um, you know, this delta function, then the, the amplitude. Um, and uh, so uh, recall that this is h um, plus h bar, um, h bar, this is delta. And now um, we have seen already, let's just take um, for the moment uh, the, the P0 component of the momentum. So P0, I mean, that we have, uh, we have seen is one plus C squared. Um, times omega. Of course, this is for a particular particle. I mean, later we will also put label i that all these um, things. And now, of course, this is already, um, I mean, this is here, so that is a coordinate on the celestial sphere. So we, we, do, um, we don't need to, and so this is already so on, on the, the right um, operator. But uh, now we, we need to see that actually uh, this omega. So what, how does this operator look like? So actually this, um, this omega um, that comes from, from the following operator acting on, 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 a, on, the, on the conformal, um, on, the, on the field under consideration. So why, why is it this form? Huh? Um, so um, that you can see, uh, very easily, so you um, we know that um, I mean when you have an exponential with some with, a, with some derivative of operator, I mean this is f x plus c. So um, now if so we have let's say we have a if we have a function which depends on h and h bar, like like it enters um, like like it enters here. So we have h, h bar, and of course here there's no h's anymore. So all h dependence is, is, is here in this factor. So let's see what what, the, what our operator does on this function. I mean it's uh, probably obvious already for you. So of course according to, to this rule, uh, um, it shifts. Uh, uh, the conformal um, dimensions by plus um, each by plus one half. So when you look now in what it does on so the only dependencies um, of omega and enters here. And um, So it shifts um, h plus h bar, um, which was, I mean, so the um, we start, with, so this factor is um, h plus h bar minus one. Uh, um, and then we, by uh, that, we, we get an additional omega factor. So that means uh, this operator um, here does exactly brings us this, uh, the right omega when it acts on the on the amplitude. So um, to this end, uh, 
uh, we can now write uh, our momentum operators in the following way. And each one um, is multiplied with this, uh, maybe um, at, at first point, a, a strange looking operator. And that, of course, that the C dependence is just nothing else than the, the that is nothing else from 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 the um, what is in the Q. I mean, we call that we have Q mu is Q mu times omega. So this is just the C dependence. Um, so this gives us the operator um, determining the. So momentum. Now you can, for example, take a particular operator P0 plus uh, P3. So you add this guy and that guy, then um, it looks, it, it gives you actually just um, this exponential. And you see now we have learned that this uh, this just um, multiplies the amplitude by an additional omega factor, which which means that uh, that you get here um, an additional that you get here an additional omega factor, which you can of course then trade as that you shift the delta by plus one. So in other words, what what we what we have um, what we see now is that. If P, so we now take the operator that act on a particular particle, uh, I, and then we have here the celestial amplitude, which is a function, as usual, a function of C, delta I, and J. And then in, in this amplitude, um, this operator uh, now shifts this particular. I, um, um, this particular delta of the ice particle by by one, but, uh, but all others um, all others remain the same. So this is a very important concept um, of this operator because it will. Uh, comprise into a whole set of operators um, uh, giving rise to, to um, super translation symmetry, which is a part of the PMS symmetry we will see. Okay, now, uh, and now you see that, of course, now as, as promised, I mean, uh, you see that now when this PX on a, for example, on a on a, a clone amplitude, it shifts, uh, you can shift by this, you can play with, and you can shift, for example, the delta. So that means you can here now, for example, um, if you act uh, a couple of times, two times, I mean, this particular, on a particular part, you can shift this minus four um, down to minus two, and then you, 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 by this, you can essentially write the graviton amplitude as a shift as a shifted, um, as a um, as a um, as a clone amplitude um, um, with, with subject to a momentum transform transformation in, in, in the moment in, in, in the, um, uh, to a shift in, in four dimensional um, Minkowski space or um, subject to this um, shift in the in the delta in the conformal dimension. So now um, let me come to uh, to the uh, soft theorems, uh, which per se give rise to um, interesting or important um, uh, word identities, and then to and then to um, asymptotic symmetries. So. Um, And 
um, maybe you have soft theorems um, play an important role in general and in, in, in gauge and in, in, in gravity theory uh, because um, the soft theorems uh, they constrain the amplitudes uh, in a very non-trivial way um, and um, so they um, play an important role in uh, in, in in, in both in the consistency and the structure of amplitudes. So, uh, what what uh, I don't know whether you learned soft um, limits last week already. Um, so, but um, in usual, let me just um, briefly uh, write down what we do in usual PFT amplitudes. Uh, and so, um, the soft theorems or soft limits mean that we, we send um, one energy energy of a particle to zero. For example, the energy of particle um, J, um, and then we see, of course, then we get um, and the amplitude factor rises into a lower point amplitude and um, plus times some so-called split factor, and and the split factor and, and that is um, has a very important structure. So um, and. But of course now um, in, in the celestial sphere we have integrated um, with respect to the energy, so we, um, we need to understand what, what the soft limit means there. Um, but let me just um, um, show you what, what, we, when, what, what happens in usual quantum field theory. So you have an endpoint amplitude, um, uh, let's say an end, um, you have an end, end n plus one point amplitude, and uh, it will um, it it will in the soft limit. So when you send uh, the momentum p n plus one to zero, um, it will uh, be an expansion in in a in a small parameter epsilon um, with with rest with some split so called split factors. Um, so you have different orders. Uh, times the endpoint end amplitude. So this is field theory, and, and indeed uh, this split uh, uh, term, this is, has been already computed for young Mills and for gravity, gravity uh, by, by Weinberg. <clears throat> and I mean, it has a very um, nice form, I will come to it. So in fact, the way how you compute it is that, um, so you have to look at the amplitude where you get a singularity and the amplitude is comprised out of, um, I mean, the n plus one point amplitude is comprised out of um, many uh, Feynman uh, diagrams. And now you have to look at those that Feynman di um, diagrams, which, uh, which, are, which have this pole in this limit, uh, um, which contribute to the, to the n plus one point amplitude. And, and that is, for example, one. Hello. Of uh, may I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, I'm a bit confused about this pole structure. So here, uh, are you considering holomorphic soft limits or anything? Because uh, I mean, one by epsilon square. When you say no, uh, no, no, it's not. This is completely general. You don't need to talk about, uh, for example, if you now this is in what this is in four dimensions, and you can just work with with real um, with real polarizations and and vectors, and then you just get get some computed. So there's no, I mean, you can then, when you specify to elicit to look, you can get um, either holomorphic or anti-holomorphic split factors. Okay. Thanks. I mean, you just compute it actually. So, that, um, so here, this, this is one diagram which contributes to this expansion because you see there's a, there's a, um, of course, a propagator P1, um, Pn uh, plus P1 squared. Uh, and now, if um, when when Pn goes to zero, and I mean the P1 is massless, so this becomes zero. That is exactly the point which I mean you, you introduce an order parameter which gives you um, according to count is one over epsilon squared. So this is gives you a leading contribution to to here, and indeed you can compute it, and it's um, it doesn't I mean holomorphicity is uh, is not. Um, so uh, so here point. epsilon is what energy of Pn plus one. Sorry, uh, epsilon. 
epsilon is what the energy of pn plus 1 yeah you can um you can you expand it so you do pn uh, plus 1 goes 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 to epsilon and epsilon is um goes to zero and then you get this powers limit or this inverse powers limit okay. thank you I mean, the most important, I mean, the point, point is that you get also the subleading term, which is a bit more difficult to com compute from this diagram, but you, I mean, you, so the way you, you have to compute this, so to compute this um, factor here is that you now, so you have your Feynman diagram, so you have here, uh, you have here your uh, standard young Mills vertex, uh, um, and then uh, you have the propagate, and then you have the remaining amplitude, then you, you do this limit here, and then you you, um, you extract this, this term. There's also one over epsilon squared comes already from the propagator. So that means from the remaining um, stuff, you, you take the, the, the zero or an epsilon. But then there's a, also an, um, a linear or an epsilon, which gives you the second uh, this is linear term. And indeed, there's, uh, this is, um, if we have, so this refers to canonical the color ordering, so there, there, there's, a, um, there's, a, um, there's a second contribution, which is n plus one, uh, um, n, I mean, just from, um, so from this case, one, two. And then, of course, you get, again, this one over epsilon power. Good. And um, yeah, let me just stress, I mean, so we, we are interested in, in this effect, or we want to see what these effects mean in um, on the celestial sphere. Let me just repeat that uh, so we get, you get some universal uh, so-called split factor, soft split factors, this and that, uh, and they uh, play an important role. I mean, let me just, uh, let me just uh, um, emphasize it. Uh, so, um, and that uh, soft, so soft zero interesting. I mean, you will get um, wider identities from them, as we can see. And these wider identities um, um, serve, um, or from that you can um, extract um, as I represent um, asymptotic symmetries. So. Yeah, that we will, uh, will be uh, the main part of, of um, today's um, second, uh, and then second uh, of the second part of my talk. So, um, in order, so now let's um, now. So this was in, in um, this was now the, the story in in the, what I mentioned in Kowski space. Uh, now, so how is it in, 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 in on the celestial sphere? Um, and indeed, uh, let's discuss um, to, to make things easier. We, let's discuss uh, for clone, and but it's easy to generalize. It's actually the same um, in four dimensions. I mean, you can compute the split factors for four dimensions, and then um, they're universal for all the any higher point on the Twitch because it's which is kind of obvious because you see that um, the only thing what what matters here is. is is what enters here. I mean, this Feynman, this young Mills um, three vertex, and then I mean, here it doesn't really matter um, how, what this n is. So we take this um, four clone amplitude we have um, considered before, and. Um, yeah, well, um, I, I already tell you that. Um, what the soft limit means. So what we what we will do now is we will send delta four to one, this uh, conformal dimension, which is uh, lambda four goes to zero. And <clears throat> I mean, recall that delta four is one plus i lambda four. Um, so and then so we take the clone amplitude for clone amplitude we have uh, just discussed the, the celestial amplitude, and and look what this limit does. So, I mean, let's just um, look. 
uh, what, what we have to take care of. So um, this is the fourth moon, amplitude, and um, um, okay, it starts here. So um, delta, delta four goes to one. Um, yeah, so of course it was still here in the delta function, not much happens, but um, uh, but but you have to see uh, what um, I mean. Of course, here we have to see what what happens um, here with this exponent, uh, and um, in in the same time uh, with with this delta functions. So. Um, So for that, um, so we uh, we are so we are interested in this object yeah, and from from what we have from computed before, and then uh, yeah, so we need to use um, a delta function identity, namely that um, recall that we had this. Uh, I can write it. Um, we had this uh, delta four minus two power. So I can do um, delta four here over two. And so we get a delta function when you do this limit. So we have to apply this formula for, um, for this factor here. So we get a delta function with this argument. So let's do this. Um, let's do this um, first. So um, this amplitude um, so this, uh, becomes. Um, so we, we we pull out um, this factor, so we get this this in the um, inverse. So we have um, two. Delta four minus one two pi over four. This two pi comes from the from the delta function of um, um, of um, of this integral uh, using this delta function. Now here, of course, we can just uh, um, send. We can we can take this limit, and the nothing changes. Of course, the minus four becomes a minus three. So this is trivial. Then now we have this delta function. Um, so this delta function is um, coming with epsilon four, um, uh, with this uh, delta four minus two um, exponent. So this gives us. And then, yeah, we really just write um, write down what what we had before. Of course, we should get something like a, a three point function now, dressed or multiplied with uh, with. Uh, uh, with, with some um, split factor, or let's say celestial split factor, according to um, our um, soft formula in four dimensions. And uh, so, so looking, um, I mean, you can um, then also um, compute. I mean, higher orders in the soft in according to similar as in the, in the four dimensional case. But this now we compute the leading contribution, which was, um, which comes from using this delta function identity. And then we have this um, theta functions, which I mean, there is nothing, no change. So I mean, that's the same as before. <clears throat> So, um, so now since we are in, in three-point amplitude, uh, we need again to assume uh, that C and Z, 
Z and um, Z bar are independent real variables uh, in order to get something non vanishing. So, um, And of course, we want the non vanishing three point amplitude. So we, uh, we assume that, um, that, um, that, um, that uh, the holomorphic side is, not, is non vanishing, and the other holomorphic side is, is vanishing. And then, but when that is, that, is uh, that, should, that of course, should come out uh, if, we, if we start with this, um, with this assumption. Uh, because um, you know from last week that um, only then if if the holomorphic uh, side is vanish non vanishing and the other holomorphic is vanishing or vice versa we get something we can really get some non vanishing sleep and amplitude. So if we assume this, uh, uh, we can write uh, the delta function um, in the following way. So this was the delta function. I mean that's simple, simple delta function um, um, identities or properties. So that you here you see already how um, where we will um, where we will move on. So you see, we get here now um, automatically, so to say, this delta function constraint. We had we had already uh, seen yesterday in the three point amplitude. So that means we will uh, this is has support on. Uh, so we have um, the holomorphic C's are non vanishing, while the um, anti holomorphic um, differences of C are vanishing. And um, now with this, uh, um, so we can immediately write down that. Um, that uh, this delta function here, um, so this delta function here um, will now become simpler uh, because um, so we have C13. Um, so because this is um, supported at zero, so um, we have only one argument, and we have only uh, the argument. Um, Collides to one, so one contribution. Um, so uh, with this manipulation, so uh, we we can now write for this for this amplitude. We get the following. I mean, so it doesn't matter. We have this stuff from the delta function. Times. And um, yeah, so that is what the delta function we have. Okay. We had we have now one of the heavy side functions that argument zero. This is simply because uh, one of them had 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 the same argument as uh, as what what was in the uh, what is in argument of the delta function. So that is now supported at um, that becomes zero because of um, because of this. Um, that's of course easy to treat. And then we have these factors um, delta one um, epsilon three. So here we can also do some 
a little um, we can get we get rid of we get rid of the um, anti-holomorphic uh, pieces um, by uh, because c1 is equal to c, uh, c1 bar is equal to c, um, c3 bar but uh, there's no not yet any um, holomorphic anti-holomorphic decoupling in this factor and then we have um, of course uh, uh, the remaining c, uh, theta function will do the same, uh, they will uh, obtain the same um, simplifications as this um, delta, um, delta powers. Uh, one, two, four, three, okay. Um, now we further assume So we no, note that we want a non-vanishing um, three-point amplitude. Then um, this certainly, uh, which depend, which will be uh, supporting on the holomorphic um, part. So this is certainly non-vanishing. And um, and uh, we can also assume. Uh, I mean, without restriction, further. That uh, C24 is a non vanishing and C34 are non vanishing. I mean, that means actually we will see in our next section that this means that we, we are not interested in, in collinear in, in collinear singularity because it's, um, this such uh, um, difference uh, being zero um, means actually that we, we are sticking to a collinear. Uh, limit. So we can assume it without any restriction um, to obtain a non vanishing, a uh, uh, non trivial uh, three point amplitude. With this in mind, uh, now uh, we can uh, further manipulate uh, the um, one of the delta, I mean, we can further manipulate this delta function here. It becomes uh, again similar uh, delta function properties are used for. Times and with all this in mind, we can now uh, move on and get some further simplifications. So we get one over two delta four, and then. Um, Actually, here we can put some of the signs together with the other sign factors, such that we uh, we we have um, um, yeah, we can. Um, okay. So we have um, we have here uh, one for so the four two as well. yeah so the four two so um, the four two appears twice so um, with a minus sign so we can uh, drop it. Um, let's see here is a four. Okay. Um, so, um, in fact, this is one because uh, we now, because of this delta function, um, so we see one bar is equal to C3 bar. And then uh, we have um, this as we want, I mean, as we are used to already from the three point amplitude, we have this anti holomorphic. Um, delta function support. 
So which is already very, very in lines of what we need for the three point amplitude. And then uh, we have this buffer. And um, indeed, this buffer is one uh, because of um, delta one C, C bar, because of this delta function here. And um, yeah, so what else do we have? We have this epsilon. Now we have managed that this um, delta factors um, have already said. Um, on the holomorphic dependencies. And then we have system of functions. And eventually um, we have the standard function. So this is now. Um, what we get for the soft limit, of course, this is not still not. I mean, how how we can um, get any um, any useful information from it? Uh, but uh, now uh, we use or recall that. So the recall. Um, I mean, we have. So how 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 can this be written as a product? Um, this should in some way be, uh, contain a three point amplitude, a three clone amplitude. So recall. Uh, the three clone amplitude we have computed yesterday, and I have, um, I've, um, I've um, shown it to you today again. So, yesterday we didn't, didn't put the epsilons, but now I can uh, let me just recall um, what this three point amplitude is uh, with, with the epsilons also written in. And of course, you you see that um, this already looks very much um, um, like um, the structure from what we have just derived. Yeah? I mean, a part, of course, only. And then we have a sign. So this comes from um, writing um, writing um, the three point amplitude in terms of um, I mean, containing all the epsilon. So. And then we use delta functions. And then uh, we also need this epsilon. So, like we, I mean, this is the theta function, the self step functions um, to, to make sure that the omega integrals we have integrated are positive. So, uh, if you compare this now um, with uh, what, what is in here. Um, you can easily find uh, now our final result. Uh, so, um, so this is now the final result. Uh, so, of course, here you see the singularity. This is now the leading or what was before the epsilon part. And this is so this, are, this is now the soft soft limit of the four clone amplitude. Well, this is a corresponding manipulation. We did now the corresponding manipulation, which uh, which um, lead to the uh, for um, which leads um, to a similar expression uh, than what we have in four dimensions, which in four dimensions is simply representing the soft limit. Indeed, um, this is a um, this is a split factor. So actually, um, um, coming back to the previous question, so this is uh, this is a holomorphic split factor because we get the soft limit on a plus clone. I mean, it would be anti-holomorphic. If the soft limit would be on a minus one, so this is this is a famous soft soft factor, which of course um, in in four dimensional um, spin or helicity uh, variables you would have something like um, three one. Uh, uh, sorry, I mean in, in four dimension it would be something like three one. Uh, um, 
three, four, uh, four, one. I mean, so that is the form. I mean, you have four go soft, and then you you have some neighbor neighboring uh, gluons um, in the bracket. So this is of course kind of um, straightforward, but it's non-trivial that this limit, um, this soft limit, this four-dimensional soft limit, um, appears uh, from from you know the celestial sphere from from this limit. And, and this has, has um, very important consequences. So indeed, we can have um, a bit, uh, um, um, we can um, look a bit on the structure, what, what has happened. So now, the, so we, we, had, we had this uh, omega-4, this Mellon integral um, of, the four, of the force gluon, which went soft eventually. And uh, so, um, when we just look look at our four gluon amplitude, we have to scroll back. You see, this so this is uh, so um, there's a one over omega four power um, in addition to this Mellin integral. So, what we are actually uh, what we have here is. So what we uh, what enters in this amplitude is that there's an additional omega to the four to the minus one, uh, and then um, here we have some some function, and so that means uh, taking uh, taking uh, the delta four goes to one. Uh, in this form, uh, you see, means that um, if Together with this factor here, that we we extract here the first uh, the first exp the first expansion term, which is exactly the soft term. So, so, so you see when going here this um, doing this limit, and then um, so. Uh, when we take this limit and then we extract the pole, the, um, the pole one over four minus one, um, exactly in the limit omega four goes to, goes to zero. But the higher orders like omega four to zero, um, um, and then that this gives you the next, the next, um, the next. Um, the next order in the sub in the soft, soft terms. So in other words, uh, the 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 end endpoint um, the endpoint uh, celestial amplitudes I assume uh, qualitatively um, such a um, soft expansion. So you have uh, um, now uh, with the so the n so you take the n plus one um, gluon soft, uh, and then you get here soft uh, factor, the zero order, and then you have um, omega n plus one to the zero, and you get another one, which of course can, can be computed and has been computed times the, the lower point celestial amplitude. And uh, what is important is that uh, this we have seen, or we have extracted from from the limit that this s goes to one, uh, and and so how do we extract this? Uh, this this uh, of course when we um, when in this omega go, um, small omega four expansion, uh, we get this term by by sending the delta four to zero because then again we get the pole, so there's no omega four power here, but so let's send. So that means this would get from epsilon to goes to zero. So that means um, the soft expansion in four dimensions corresponds to a um, expansion in the in the complex delta space, and you you you, um, you go to this discrete value as one zero or minus one, and so forth. So, so this and this uh, so that will be important in the amplitude that we. Uh, we take these limits um, in this um, in this delta space uh, and uh, get um, get something which is analog to the soft soft um, limits in four dimensional space. Okay. 
Okay. Um, are there questions? Well, Stefan, there's a question in the chat, uh, chat room. Mm -hmm. um, is there any understanding of pole in delta for log omega 10? Uh, and so um, the question, is there any understanding of pole in delta as it, so in this conformal dimension for, for log omega term in, coming from one loop corrections. Um, no, I haven't, uh, I haven't looked um, in at one loop uh, in, in much detail, so I cannot answer this. I don't know what, what, uh, uh, what uh, happens at one loop. Um, um, I mean, how, how, how this can be understood. I mean, that actually is current research. Um, so now, um, uh, of course, um, this is now the soft series, which will lead us to um, conform water identities and then to asymptotic symmetries. Um, but, um, you have seen, um, we, we of course want to understand also the um, underlying uh, conformal field theory of, um, we have seen that these amplitudes after all they look uh, quite, uh, um, quite uh, non-standard um, with respect to um, conformal field theory. Um, and we want to understand it and for that, um, to understand the underlying conformal field theory, which is uh, called the celestial conformal field theory, and, and for that, of course, for like for any um, CFT, I mean, uh, operator, operator product expansions are very important. And and so let me briefly um, show you how um, how you can extract operator product expansions. So this is, um, I mean, in order to understand the celestial conformal field theory. Um, and indeed, it's interesting because, um, like like four-dimensional uh, soft soft theorems play an um, I mean um, play in a role um, on the celestial uh, sphere. Also, um, now uh, I mean there's there are also collinear limits in four-dimensional. Um, um, from field theory, and they also play a role on the celestial sphere. And these are actually um, exactly the, the operator graph. It's, um, they, so, going taking collinear momentum means that uh, you take uh, points on the celestial sphere together. That actually briefly mentioned when we derived um, the soft limit before. So let's understand it. Uh, so we want uh, we want to get uh, OPEs. Uh, uh, for for our conformal primaries, so. and um, so OPEs. I mean, we mean that we want the behavior of of the amplitude or of the fields so when uh, when when the arguments or the positions come come close together on the celestial sphere. Uh, note that uh, that the, we have some momenta, the four-dimensional momenta. momenta they, I drop now the epsilon. So I, I mean, uh, uh, like when we started from the beginning yesterday. Uh, so you have you have um, uh, you have this uh, um, and behavior. Um, I mean, according to the definition. But now, uh, of course, if if C if the C is, uh, um, if the C uh, goes to, um, to 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 J, um, it means uh, so that it means uh, so the whole C dependence is is, is here in, in the in the Q when the omega is here. So it means that that these two momenta in four dimensions um, they become parallel. 
of course, they don't come completely parallel. I mean, you, 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 can, um, you can now do also an expansion with respect to our ordering parameters parallel um, um, of, of, of getting parallel. So, uh, but this is, of course, I mean, what I mentioned, uh, nothing else in calling that you, you look at collinear limits. So, um, in other words, so what we have just learned from, from, um, from uh, essentially from this formula here, so it's, it's essentially a trivialty, that this limit corresponds to uh, on the celestial sphere. So, taking OP on the celestial sphere takes, um, means that we, that we take collinear limit um, in the four dimensional um, amplitude. Um, um, so we take the collinear limit of this two momentum, so this is very important. So what, I mean, uh, let me um, recall uh, what, what this collinear, uh, what collinear limit means in four dimensions. Again, um, so uh, I, I, I schematically um, um, shows this like, like for the soft limit. So the recall the collinear limit in engage amplitude. So. So this is um, the four-dimensional um, story. Just to keep it. Um, so you you, uh, you you have an ordering which usually is called X. So the um, two momenta become parallel, um, and then again you have some um, some um, I mean you do do some expansion. When you have some order order expansion, um, of course, um, you you need to choose x and one minus x such that that uh, you don't violate momentum conservation. So um, a pi, pi, pi plus p j is now a p. So this is your new momentum. So uh, in other words, a pi is uh, becomes parallel to p j, but they are also parallel to this is p. So what, what happens in the amplitude? I mean, when, when two particle momenta of x particle become parallel, you can distinguish them anymore. It looks like that they have merged into one. So you get a lower point amplitude. So and in order to extract um, the relevant, um, the relevant um, contribution to this, you again look at, at what, what contributes um, to this endpoint amplitude. So, um, and indeed, you can um, now you have to extract, you have to um, consider from all your Feynman amplitudes, uh, all your Feynman uh, diagrams contributing to the, to the endpoint amplitude. You have to consider those which give you a singular contribution. Note that here, this is now um, you have a propagator, but now if the two become parallel, I mean, this becomes zero, I and mean, so this becomes one over p squared. And, and that is um, on shell zero for massless particles. So um, again, we have to compute this uh, contribution and then um, multiply it with the remaining amplitude. And at leading order, again, you have sub leading collinear contributions, you get the following. So we, we do it for plus um, helicity for both um, gluons which become collinear and have plus helicity. And then you get some sort of split factor, but um, which is now um, actually write it directly in spina helicity. So, um, and then this is x square root of it times the lower point amplitude. So, as I said, I mean, you will have, I mean, it's the lower point amplitude. So, what uh, the, the lower point amplitude, what you see is, so you, you can't distinguish this. Two particles anymore, so they will the momentum combines into one momentum, and that is the momentum you will see in the in the lower point amplitude, and of course we're in the same velocity. So that's um, that's in mathematical uh, terms what what is going on, and 
Now, um, what does it mean on the celestial sphere? So note that we have P as XP and, and, and PJ is uh, one minus XP. So we have to see what happens if it's a level of, um, of um, celestial coordinates. So of course, PI is omega I QI. This should be now XP, which, okay, let me have some space. Which, um, so if we define the, the, the P, I mean, of the new, so this P of the new, of the, of the, of the new or of the um, clone into which the other two have merged. So let's, this, of course, is a momentum, so it must have some, some, um, some um, representation in this way. So that means uh, this um, is XP, and then this should be according to the definition. X omega P QP, let's say corresponding Q. Uh, and then uh, the omega J, QJ is one minus XP, which now should be one minus X times omega P QP. Okay, this is just a consequence of, of our parameterization. Now, uh, so the only vector, I mean, so this is a vector and I could also make, um, vector, of course, vector indices here. Uh, so since, since, since we could go collinear, um, then uh, this vectors um, um, have to be the same. And now um, you can solve this um, system of equation, you will find that the, the X is, um, is given in terms of, of this form and one minus X is, is omega J or omega P. And in addition, you, you will find that omega P is omega I plus on omega J. So this is just a consequence of our parametrization. And note, note that this is a collinear limit corresponds to the collinear limit four dimensions, but uh, that, I mean, where we start, have started with, um, it corresponds to the limit C I goes to C J on the celestial sphere. So that means now uh, we can write down what happens on the celestial sphere. So this is the amplitude in, in, in celestial coordinates. So in, in the last the coordinates, okay, this is okay. Let me um, now. This is um, now. So what now? I do just uh, we have talked about the 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 i and the j's part if we are going collinear, but we want now um, actually that the, that the n minus one so and the ends part will become collinear. So uh, we just relabel I. So the I becomes uh, N minus one and the J becomes N. No? So um, that is now just still the, the four dimensional amplitude. So then we have, of course, um, this product. And that we want now to, now with, with the manipulation from above, we now how to translate it onto the celestial coordinates. So. So this is still the, the four-dimensional amplitude, only now written such that the last two gluons go collinear. So now in celestial coordinates, uh, um, okay, now we, so we now, the axis of course now, um, omega n minus one over p, so x is, Omega n minus one over p, and one minus x is omega n over omega p, and then the factor. So this factor here 
it simply becomes cn minus one cn. Now this is a this comes from the spinner bracket, but we also have this um, omega square roots from just translating the first term times. Uh, and now we have the x term, terms, so we have these terms here, uh, which which gives us this factor. So this might, might look uh, strange to you now because uh, why we have all this, now we have actually one omega more than before, but uh, so we have to see what happens with the, um, uh, with the full celestial amplitude after the Mellin transform. So we, we, we receive this, we receive now uh, this um, factor, in other words, in the last coordinates, uh, this expression becomes, um, so that means just um, simplify. So note that this is the difference C n minus one minus C n on the celestial sphere. On the n minus one on the n times the lower point amplitude. Good. Now, um, now we want the celestial amplitude, so um, that means that we, we need to, uh, need to uh, do the, um, the integration. Um, so let's first um, look uh, what, uh, of course, the delta, we have delta functions, um, we still have the delta, and that is, of course, important why this um, extracting the OPE from the amplitude, from the celestial amplitude by calling, doing a collinear limit, why it works at all. Uh, that is simply because the delta function goes, uh, does, uh, does the right thing under this parameterization. So this delta function of the n, n grown process, I mean, that of course can be written as i plus um, n minus two, and that's of course trivial, plus, uh, so plus omega n minus one, the q n minus one plus omega n q n, uh, but now, because of um, uh, because of this, um, this this relation here, of course, I'm I forgot here. So the, the, the third one, I mean, this one translated is of course that omega p is omega n plus omega n minus one. Huh? So and this of course is crucial now, and the, the cures are the same anyhow. So with this. This is omega uh, PQP. So in other words, this delta function becomes is identical to the del lower point delta function, which enters in this function. That's of course uh, a consequence of the momentum conservation in this um, amplitude. But it's important actually then um, for the um, celestial amplitude um, um, when we disentangle the, the Mellin integrals, and that we have to do now. So um, consider. Uh, celestial amplitude so a tilde um, okay I mean I have to, I to write down what it is I mean first and so this the full we start with the endpoint amplitude and I mean the only thing that is important now is that um, the two last few ones have plus, we assume that have plus, um, uh, plus um, helicity um, in order to um, describe a certain soft limit. So this is of course just a standard thing. Let me recall, of course, in the principles here, it is just I lambda one. And then, uh, so here I have now done uh, a split of the, I will do a split of the, of the integrations um, similar as we did in the delta function. So now um, I have, of course, uh, um, this, this integral. <clears throat> um, okay, I will, um, I will 
and to the power and in a moment. And then we have um, the last integral, the omega, this omega n minus one plus i lambda n. So why the, how do the um, how do the minus one up here? So here we usually we have um, we have i lambda, uh, but you see now um, of course from here I get I get the minus one. Right? Um, that is uh, that explains this minus one here, and then uh, we have, um, and then we have um, omega p. I mean that's just what is left over from from this factor here at times a low, lower point amplitude, and of course now we we still have too many. Uh, omega integrals, so we should um, get rid of them. Um, and um, of course, you know, I forgot there's a quarter major delta function, which that is fine because it has, it, it is, um, can be written already in terms of only the relevant omegas. <clears throat> now uh, we need uh, we need the following manipulation. So use, <clears throat> so let's just, uh, so what we want is, of course, we want to get rid of of these two integrals, uh, because um, and and then at the cost of one the omega p integral. I mean, uh, because that is the um, the integral which is associated to, the, to this um, last part of it, which is for the n, n minus one point amplitude. So I should um, I should write here n minus one. So um, this is of course the n minus one point amplitude. It has um, so uh, let's let's do this uh, manipulation. So, uh, so we, we want to somehow um, get out of these two omega integrals, uh, uh, one omega integral uh, with respect to omega p. So that is what what we just take from above, I and mean, the, the omega. Um, n minus one omega n and omega p dependencies, and now we do um, a change of variable, um, namely omega n minus one plus omega n, and then um, so in other words, we we eliminate omega n minus minus one. And then we get, I mean, this is simple exercise, omega p. And then, uh, in, I mean, this, uh, this is then only integrate to omega p. So this is, of course, a standard variable transformation. E lambda n minus one, omega n. I mean, this is, we can simply verify, and then we have times omega p. And now we want want we want to put this integral to standard canonical integral from zero to one. So we do another um, change of variable. Uh, we introduce uh, omega tilde n um, divided omega p. So then this uh, this integral becomes an integral from zero to one. So what we get now is that, um, of course, uh, we have this omega p integral uh, with um, uh, yeah, with omega p here. So we get omega p uh, to the minus one uh, to the plus one. This is, of course, this omega p here. And then, uh, since we can pull out the omega p from here, we get minus one. From we can pull out the omega uh, here, that we get minus one plus i lambda n minus one. Uh, um, and then um, from from here, uh, we get an additional um, omega p factor, which gives us minus one plus i lambda n. And um, if the whole thing I mean, is, is I lambda P minus one, I mean, it can be defined as I lambda P one. Um, 
Kabil, uh, yeah, lambda t is, is will be defined to be lambda n plus lambda n minus one. So this is, this has a, has a right formal ring, and then you have, of course, like the omega tilde integral from zero to one, one minus omega n minus one plus i lambda n minus one. And of course, the last integral is, is, is can be now easily done. It's a, it gives a um, it gives a beta function or that is trivial. Times uh, now the omega p integral, which is now the omega um, omega p to the i lambda p minus one. So are there questions for these manipulations? So um, what we have done now is uh, um, we have uh, we have now managed to uh, to um, reduce this to omega integrals, uh, omega n and omega n minus one integral to a single integral, and uh, namely omega p integral, which is a right integral for our um, for our um, Mellin transform. So what now we can uh, so what what we can conclude now is that in in the soft limit uh, the so the last uh, sorry in the collinear limits it's, it's the last amplitude boils down to this. Uh, factor. I mean, in fact, you can um, i lambda n minus one and i lambda n. And then, I mean, of course, there's um, still the c n minus one, uh, this c n minus one minus c n. But you see now, this is exactly uh, something like which we wish to get uh, because it describes uh, or it's about to describe. Uh, um, uh, some leading OPE coefficient n minus uh, two, and then uh, this is uh, the p, which for which we have associated according to this formula um, the lambda p, which is uh, lambda n plus lambda n minus one. So uh, what we have done now is we have uh, looked at uh, ci sen. Is in the celestial amplitude, we have looked at uh, on the celestial sphere at Cn goes to Cn minus one, and we have um, extracted from the celestial amplitude uh, the behavior, um, the leading behavior in, um, in in this limit. We have seen that this uh, leading uh, behavior is described as a collinear limit in four dimensions, and so we, uh, we use the parameterization of the uh, four-dimensional uh, collinear limit and then extracted uh, this, this, this expression here. And now, <clears throat> and now since, since each of this uh, clone uh, in the amplitude corresponds to some conformal operator, we can now um, just extract the local behavior so or we get I mean, we get the local behavior from uh, from the correlator. So th this gives the local behavior on on the celestial sphere for the C n goes to the n minus one. And so we, let's say we have some uh, gluon operator uh, for the n minus one particle with positive clone and then that depends on 
on these positions, the n, the n minus one, and then um, uh, with the, with the with the nth clone. So this um, this is the, the limit we are considering, or the OPE we are we, are, we want to consider, and we see, or we can now just just read off from here that we get this OPE factor here. So we have um, this gamma functions and all this theta function and then I see n minus one minus the n. Um, so in other words, and this is a um, lambda p for cp, now at the cp, because of course that is now the c's are entering here. So then we extract the, the op, the, the operator from, from this amplitude uh, and, and the correlator and then uh, we know that this is uh, lambda n minus one plus lambda n. So this is one one important um, OPE for two clone operators on the elastic sphere. Uh, you can consider also the full color sum. So we have, I mean, already in four dimensional I mean, how, uh, as we have looked at collinear limit for given color order, but usually have in the sphere for full color sum. And then um, uh, what you get is, uh, uh, so then you have this color labels A and B. And then, um, I mean, it's just uh, you only need to decorate the previous result with, um, with um, color and then put it in the color trace and extract the relevant object. And the color trace um, will involve um, structure constant. And then, when you extract it, and it goes as straightforward, um, it gets this. So note that this delta one plus uh, um, delta two gives exactly the the, um, the sum of, of lambdas under consideration, and that is at CP. So this is the final result for for the OP. And now, um, so do other questions? I don't hear or see questions. So, um, so we have now understood what uh, what um, soft limits and collinear limits are um, describing on the celestial sphere. So, um, uh, in particular, uh, collinear limits uh, describe OPEs. Uh, so we can actually now combine the two and, 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 and um, define. Uh, so we can uh, now define um, the following object. So we take um, a soft limit delta goes to one of one of these clone operators and, and define it to be a new operator. It's actually, uh, um, yeah, it's. Um, it's a current. So a node, of course, is, uh, corresponds to lambda. Lambda goes to zero. And then, um, and then from the, from the OPE, we have just um, we have just uh, derived from this OPE. You just insert this limit now. I mean, you have to be a bit careful with this beta function. I mean, these operators have also some normalization, um, which which I haven't talked. But if you uh, properly um, if you properly impose the normalization um, on this um, for these operators, uh, you um, this, you can take you can do this limit uh, lambda goes to zero in this um, in this OPE without um, any problem, and as a, that means without getting any similarity. And then what you find is that this occurrence, uh, so, so this is the occurrence. That they fulfill the following um, OPE. 
which which of course is um, similar to you. Uh, this is um, this gives rise to a Katzmoni algebra. So this gives this is um, at, at level zero. So this gives rise um, to holomorphic. I mean, so this you see that we have only um, only the holomorphic coordinates uh, take place in this OPE at this leading order. So we get um, we get a holomorphic um, Katzmoni algebra. In other words, we have now seen that um, on the celestial sphere uh, that there is some non-abelian uh, global symmetry um, furnished. Uh, So, in other words, by looking at um, at uh, soft limits uh, for for gluons um, and and taking um, taking this limit, we have found um, well together with the OP, with the OPEs, uh, uh, we have found uh, some uh, symmetry holding at um, at um, um, at, um, at um, on the celestial sphere. Some global symmetry, and uh, you can imagine that uh, if we do this now, we have only now uh, done this um, with the gluon operators, but you can also now uh, take the graviton amplitudes and also derive OPEs for graviton operators, and then also discuss soft modes, and then you can see what what that also you get uh, operators which which generate a symmetry and which fulfill some word identities. Uh, and so that um, I want to show you um, a bit now uh, what what uh, can be done further. So uh, in my last um, in my last um, ten minutes, I think. Or sorry, Stefan, can I ask? So if the yeah. the if you if you just look at the double soft gluon theorem, um, just two two gluons going soft, mm -hmm. then even that. Double soft theorem can give rise to this uh, same Kakmudi symmetry that uh, the current algebra symmetry that you have here, which is the uh, the one that you wrote down here. I mean, uh, if you take two gluons soft in like you know opposite, uh, I mean, you take two gluons soft and look at the commutators, then you get the same. Mm -hmm. um, so somehow the, it seems like this Kakmudi symmetry you have also is related to the double soft gluon theorem, right? But here you didn't take the two soft limit. You took like one soft and then collinear. I was wondering if there is a direct connection with the, the double soft gluon theorem. But, but this is the. But this is double soft. I mean, I take um, I take um, so I, I I'm I'm here. Um, um, I have here the oper the operator product and I, um, both um, both of the of the of the operators I take um, soft from. But uh, in the in the original double soft, you don't have to take any collinear. I mean that that was my, maybe that's that was my confusion. Like you don't have to take any collinear limit, right? I mean the two gluons can. But we, yeah, okay, but we, um, <clears throat> but here um, this is simply the OPE on the last sphere. So you you can um, we have derived it by taking collinear limit in yes. four dimensions. But that was um, that was uh, so to say. Uh, um, um, what was a, a recipe to, to extract these OPEs? Um, but you can also uh, you can also um, I, I think on uh, Alice Yuan on Friday probably might talk about uh, some different method of extracting this OPE. But when you, once you have these OPEs, uh, you take double soft of, of these two, two oper gluon operators and you get your current algebra. Okay, I see. So the, the Z and W don't have to be close to each other. Like, I mean, it will still remain. They, they, they don't have to be close to each other. Right? Well, you have uh, close to each other means that you you have um, that you have that you consider the, the leading contribution C C goes to W. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, I see. Because in the in the double soft gluon, the two gluons can be in any direction on the sphere, and you still have the same Takmudi. Yeah, 
Yes, but um, but, um, but this is no restriction. I mean, this is simply the, the OPE on the celestial sphere. And I mean, if you, as, as soon as we have seen that, as soon as you um, stick to, let's say, to the leading order of C goes to W, um, you. I see, okay. The momenta become um, become um, parallel automatically because uh, um, because of um, this relation. Let me, um, um, and so because here because of the parameterization and so the P. So if if the C C I becomes close to C J, I mean then uh, that means that the Q um, I and the Q J become almost parallel. Yes. Yes. Which then, according to parameterization, means collinear automatically. Yeah, okay. But I then see. you can, of course, um, in addition, um, you can still do, um, you can still do um, soft limits. Yeah. Now, the, 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 the reason I'm asking this is in gravity, if you look at double soft theorem, then there are many terms in the double soft uh, factor which don't have collinear yes. singularity, which don't have collinear singularities. I mean, they, they, they don't. I mean, in the sense when you take your QI and QJ parallel, those terms don't blow up. Um, they are these contact yeah. terms. So I, I, I mean, with this OP, you may not, I don't know if you like ca ca catch them in the, um, you know, when you do the OP for gravity. Uh, yeah, we, we, we do catch them. Actually, I, I wanted to show you. Okay, okay, OP fine, thanks. For, for gravity phones. And, and so you can, um, so the, the, the message is that uh, by, by do, looking at, um, at celestial amplitudes and, and um, looking at collinear limits, you can extract all, all OPEs between gravitons and, and, and gauge bosons or, 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 or yeah. And, okay, I mean, okay, thanks. Yeah, thanks for, for the question. Um, good, so um, yeah, so now I will um, end my Blackboard talk and actually I will, um, I will um, go to, to um, um, to, to slides. Uh, um, so actually, can you see my talk now? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so actually, this is now um, in the same um, method as before. Um, so we take um, uh, collinear limits of, of some amplitudes, uh, um, which means we want uh, to extract OPEs. So we want, uh, for example, now, that is what I didn't, uh, it's a bit, bit more uh, tricky because um, already in, um, in the four-dimensional Minkowski space, if you if have minus and plus, plus gluons, I mean, the, the, the collinear limit is, is more tricky. And, and so it receive, you receive more, uh, more uh, terms uh, in the, in the OPE, and, and so this is now the OPE, we, but we, we computed it in the same way as, as I demonstrated you um, uh, in my lecture for the, so what we what, what did in, my, in the lecture is we, we considered here plus one, plus one, and then we, we essentially got the first term. Huh? So that is similar, this, and the C's, I mean, this are this, oil, um, this beta function, so there is some combinations of gamma functions, and, uh, um, and we had this um, this term here. Um, and now, um, of course, this this two uh, gluons they may fuse um, this. So when if you have minus and plus, and may fuse into a minus uh, gluon and on a plus gluon. That's why you have more terms. And indeed, you also have spin minus two and plus uh, two. So you will also um, encounter a graviton here. So this is the operator for the graviton because it's this. Spin uh, plus minus two, and uh, so uh, we have derived this um, this OPEs uh, by uh, looking at this collinear limit, and actually, um, um, so we, we 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 took the amplitudes in four-dimensional Minkowski space, and um, like I did presented in my lecture, and and looked how how we can extract um, the, these OPEs. And uh, independently, um, the group in Harvard had arrived this OPEs uh, by first principles. And uh, I guess um, Alice Yuan will talk about this on Friday, maybe. And of course, they are exactly the same. But that is quite in, in interesting because 
uh, you see that uh, important non um, this is an important uh, non consistency that we used four dimensional S matrix um, um, concepts um, on S matrix results uh, to constrain or derive these OPEs. Uh, and, and they uh, derive um, them from first principles on the celestial sphere. And of course, it is, um, um, this is um, very non trivial um, consistency. And indeed, uh, what I want to leave here um, sketch now is that this OPE or uh, this um, results are very important to, to, um, um, to, to um, um, represent the BMS symmetry on. On the celestial sphere. So let me. I mean, it's a part. Um, repeat, repeat what I um, what I uh, told you. I mean, let's all summarize. So we, we talked about symmetries um, on the celestial sphere, and I, I think I have shown you um, or convinced you that at null infinity, I mean, where we are um, looking, um, that there are more hidden symmetries present, and which then. Uh, um, should allow us to constrain the S matrix, and so this should give non trivial consistency on the amplitudes. Uh, we, we, there was this uh, symmetry we discussed yesterday, this is just a conformal symmetry on the, on the, on the um, celestial sphere, which is related to the Lorentz symmetry in four dimensions. It, it gives us this, um, it transforms essentially the amplitude like, like, um, like conformal primary operators. And then uh, Tudor introduced this uh, combination of momentum operators, which um, so P0, zero plus P3, which um, does the job that it shifts the, the delta, which is, I mean, the conformal dimension. So by that, we can actually represent um, gravitational, celestial gravitational amplitudes essentially by um, gauge amplitude um, uh, subject to this operator, which is the translation operator. And now um, we talked about soft theorems. This is again, um, in a nutshell, uh, what, um, what I showed you before in four dimensions QFT. So we have uh, we, one particle becomes softer. Um, actually, this would be PN plus one becomes soft. So the last particle, then we get a series of, of, of soft terms. So I showed you this. Um, in fact, we computed the leading term for the Young Mills amplitude. So the split factor, the one over epsilon contribution, but there are also, um, of course, uh, soft factors and for the graviton amplitude, there are um, three universal <coughs> soft fact split factors. I mean, three orders and for, for the clone, there are two universal. So it's more than that they are universal. And the soft theorems play an important role for <coughs> asymptotic symmetries. We have already seen that, that uh, taking the soft limit of, of a gluon operator, it gives us a, it gives us um, this um, Katz-Modi symmetry for the, for the um, this current algebra for the, for the uh, gluon, gluon so. And on the celestial sphere, of course, we, we cannot send, any, um, we have not, um, I mean, the energy is integrated out, so we have to, to do something different, and we have realized, I mean, I demonstrated it for the clones, so let's go to the second line, um, that the leading term is we send delta, so of the last uh, clone, uh, delta, of course, this would be also omega n plus one goes to zero. Um, so we send delta to one, uh, but then the next leading term, just by looking at the, at the omega integral, we, we could see that the next, um, we can see that the next um, leading order in the soft um, expansion is, is, is determined on the celestial sphere by the limit delta n plus one goes to zero. And, uh, uh, and similar for the graviton, you have this soft expansion. So you see that this is an expansion in the complex delta space. So we, here we are on the principle series. So we, now, we have learned that um, delta uh, should be one plus i lambda. So we are, we are sitting here, but, uh, but uh, doing the soft expansion uh, means that, I mean, soft expansion is that we, we move um, in the IR. So we do this IR expansion which corresponds now to moving in this uh, delta space uh, towards the left hand side. So and for each of this uh, discrete uh, uh, position here we, we, we obtain some, some soft, soft factor which then again is um, related to a symmetry. And of course in this going that direction gives a, gives a higher order terms I mean the UE expansion. 
So concretely, so um, how do these um, soft theorems relate to VAD identities and eventually to uh, BMS symmetries? Uh, um, <clears throat> so take the soft graviton limit, so delta goes to zero. So you have a, so a soft operator, so you have a um, graviton uh, conformal primary field and you take it with delta goes to zero. So takes this, takes this um, graviton and, and then uh, takes a limit delta goes to zero. And you can do um, you can do a so-called shadow um, integral, a shadow operation. A shadow is uh, is a very uh, well-known concept from uh, conformal field theory that a shadow transformation is a complex integral which converts an operator with spin j to an operator with a spin minus j and uh, conformal dimensions two minus delta. So that means when you start here with a soft graviton with delta is equal to zero, you will get here delta is equal to. So this has um, this might has exactly as you can prove that it has exactly the right. Um, um, so it has exactly the right uh, conformal dimension a, a stress tensor should have. Uh, I mean, so this is delta um, h plus um, so h plus h bar is two and and the spin is h minus h bar. So it's uh, exactly. Um, has exactly um, the conformal weight to zero. And, and it has been shown by um, Angelus Fotopoulos and Thomas Taylor that this object is really a stress tensor. In other words, it has the right um, um, VAD identity with, with, the, with any other operator. So it gives you exactly what, what, what your, the VAD identity for a stress tensor. And then uh, taking further this uh, T, um, you can also um, then uh, with the corresponding T, T bar, you can um, compute this OPE, which is the right, or which is uh, what you expect uh, for, for this OPE. Um, I mean, for central charges equal to zero. So you have a, you have a T and a T bar, and from that um, you can construct all this Virasoro mode. So yesterday we, we talked only about the conformal transformation, where so you have only L minus one, L zero, and L one, and the bar, so you have only the six generators for Lorentz symmetries, but you, but we have on the celestial sphere a whole set, uh, a whole set of Virasora generators. So the, uh, in fact, we, there's a whole Virasora algebra is, is, is established. And um, so that comes from, from the soft limit, um, so by simply considering soft gravitons, so, so that is why the soft theorems are so important because you 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 get VAD identities and then um, similar you get um, you will get you can relate this I mean the modes to to symmetry algebra. <clears throat> now you can take um, so what what is the soft graviton um, describing delta goes to one? Um, you can um, define this operator with um, which is spin two, it has this conformal weight. So again, it does a VAD identity, which it fulfills. So this is, CIs are simply normalizations so, um, of this operator. So you see that um, this, we have already learned that the uh, um, momentum operator somehow shifts the, the delta, um, the conformal dimension, and this P is related to this um, momentum. And, um, so it shifts also the deltas. It shifts the delta for for the ice particle, and this ratio it simply needs to take care of that we have different normalization of operators. And um, now, um, yeah. So we have p and we have um, t. So we have, uh, and actually, out of this p, we can um, extract via um, these manipulations. Um, many more modes, uh, like we we um, construct uh, Virasoro modes, and then we we can compute um, this algebra. And actually, it turns out that this is then with this L uh, coming from the stress tensor, this P that this is exactly fulfills the, the so-called local or extended BMS algebra constructed by uh, by Barnich. Yeah. So um, there's a nice um, relation. Um, 
I have, I hope I have convinced you that between conformal soft theorems on the celestial sphere, VAD identities and, and, and BMS algebra. And um, so what is, I mean, uh, let me, let, because I mentioned BMS, so let me um, explain what BMS is. Uh, um, and then I will come to my last slide. I, I, I think people are um, um, uh, getting tired. So um, the BMS group, it's the symmetry um, um, of asymp asymptotically flat four dimensional space time at null infinity. So it is all, it comprises all uh, sy symmetry operations which transform one asymptotically flat solution of Einstein equation to a new physically inequivalent one. And um, actually, this group is, um, is, is comprised out of the Lorentz group plus uh, so called super translations. And this is exa exa exactly the symmetries which we find uh, on the celestial sphere uh, with these soft operators. Namely, uh, let me put everything together now. Um, so we have yesterday, we have already talked about this Lorentz group, which is uh, comprised out of this. Um, three plus three um, generators. So this is a global conformal transformations. Then today I discussed this uh, P operator in particular, this was this P zero plus P three. And they all give uh, rise to global um, space-time translation, of course. And we have, that's what we have seen. And you can take um, certain combinations of, of the one I have. Today we have constructed uh, P zero, P one, P, P two, P three, and then certain combinations give you this operators. I mean, recall we had always this exponential, which does the shift on the deltas. And then um, this, they comprise um, the, the super translation symmetry. So this is exactly the BMS group uh, of, of Bondi, Metz, and, 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 um, and Sachs. And, but then uh, with our full uh, um, Virasoro algebra, um, so we have this all, but we have not only this global um, conformal transformation, but we have a full um, Virasoro, we have all Virasoro generators, uh, which then uh, fulfill this Virasoro algebra at central charges equal to zero, and they um, give all conformal, um, local conformal transformations or super rotations, and then Actually, we can also, what I have shown you before, we can have also a whole set of, of modes for P. So these are these P's here, which go into this uh, uh, extended BMS algebra. And, and so this all give the, um, BM, um, the BMS algebra. And uh, um, so um, now um, we see that from symmetry, starting symmetries of the celestial OPEs, uh, and the correlators, we, um, we get this whole um, set of symmetries and uh, they vice versa uh, constrain the S matrix. Uh, they give non-trivial consistency. And in fact, in a, in, a, in a recent paper, we discussed also um, um, not only the, uh, we also discussed the, the TF, I mean, so the super, um, the super version of, of this, um, of this um, stress tensor, um, which gives us um, extended super BMS algebra. And uh, yeah, I want, I didn't come now to, um, to um, couldn't go into more detail for gluons. So, uh, so I want to, to end here uh, with a summary that, uh, that uh, you can get all this um, from celestial amplitudes that you can derive all um, and construct this asymptotic symmetries and, and they of course give non-trivial input on, on, on what we want to, uh, what is current research is. I mean, there's a lot of things to be understood. Uh, um, I mean, in fact, I can go to my conclusions. Uh, um, um, so, of course, there was already the question, what happens at one loop, uh, so logs, log omegas. So, so we want to understand, um, um, in particular, what happens, um, do we have a bit of solo central charge? So it might appear at one loop. Uh, then we have, uh, I have a little bit elaborated on double copy structure, in particular, um, there's a Shukavara construction. Um, and I haven't talked at all about uh, um, string theory, or, uh, but string theory, you can also consider celestial string amplitudes, and then actually you have alpha prime string tension. 
which I mean, a priori you may think that it's crazy because alpha prime is a dimension. So how can we um, consider um, um, conformal, um, I mean, um, conformal properties of, of string amplitude, but actually it's very striking that this alpha prime is just a universal factor. So it completely disappears after the Mellin integral. And uh, we can see that actually the high energy limit of string theory is related to, to, to the celestial sphere we have um, discussed today to, to young mill series amplitudes. And so in particular, we need to understand much better the nature of this two-dimensional conformal field theory on the celestial sphere. Like, okay, now we have the OPEs, but what, what is now um, this, um, what are the, the what are, how can we construct the amplitudes from first principles using the symmetries, for example, and then um, this uh, eventually then should give us some understanding of um, how the holographic um, description um, works um, in full fledged, um, full, fully fledged, um, and, and um, that also then um, should go towards flat space holography. So let me thank you for, for your audience um, now, and I think I will stop now and I mean, accept there are other many questions. Okay. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, uh, any, any questions? Yeah. Hi, Stefan. So can you go back to your slide on the BMS algebra, the, uh, the, the bar reach uh, reference to the bar reach? The, this one or the one no, before? The one before, the one before, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah. So this C and K, uh, I, I mean, uh, those cannot be determined from OPs, right? The, I mean, yeah, this this is, yeah it should. Be, uh, I thought it's it, it is zero. Yeah, we, we find so we we, we find uh, we find this algebra without the C's. But from the double soft theorem, these are actually like linear operators in the soft graviton. I mean, these are these two co-cycles, so they are not even C numbers. I mean, they are non-trivial. Uh, Field operators, right? So that, that's that's what I was wondering. If I mean, uh, from double soft theorem perspective, you get uh, not no, you don't get a Lie algebra. You get this two per cycle extension. But you're saying uh, so. This, um, yeah, um, I um, I'm aware of. So this is uh, you say that you get this extended. This extension. Uh, yeah, yeah. You get this co cycle. Yeah, this is this paper of uh, Flauger and Distler. Actually, they showed that. If you look at yeah, this, but, yeah. uh, does it does it does this then uh, correspond to the um, to the sub sub leading uh, graviton um, soft no, limit? No, 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 no. It's only up to sub leading. It's only sub leading. Yeah. If if you uh, the, 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 if you include sub sub leading, you just get the LM LN commutator, which which is consistent with what you had with zero central charge. So that's okay. Mm -hmm. But the up to subleading, if you look at the double sub graviton theorem, then this commutator gets modified with the I mean the, the C is non-trivial. I mean that's what they showed from the double sub graviton theorem. Uh, so you say that uh, the C you get from double soft limit. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's actually not a it's not a C number. It's a linear operator in the in in the soft mode. So it's a it's what that's what they call two per cycle. So I mean it doesn't I, yeah. I, uh, so, so that's why I was wondering that somehow the double soft graviton theorem seems to give more than the OPE from the in the in the celestial sphere. Um, mm -hmm. um, so you construct operators with 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 two double with with two gravit with with. With, yeah, with yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just look at um, yeah two soft insertions and then apply soft theorems and then you see what kind of algebra emerges. That's what this uh, Flauger and Distler, I think, yeah, they, they did. And, and do these operators uh, that um, correspond to some um, conformal primaries? They, that they are not sure. They have some remarks that they could, but they were not. It was more of a speculation on their part. They were not very sure. Yeah. Okay. I remember. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's um, a very interesting remark. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I don't see uh, any. So uh, I guess. Uh, yeah. Probably people are a little bit uh, tired at this point. So uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So thanks, uh, Stefan, for the for the great lecture. Uh, thanks for agreeing to do this. Um, okay, so I guess we're going to wrap it up today. Yeah. Yeah.
Okay, thank you, Stefan. So thank you, Stefan. Uh,